The world is a vampire. Sent to drain. Secret destroyers. Hold you up to the flames. And what do I get? Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike today. I want to talk about uh, one of the guys I've been working with a little bit, uh, Tom Callis. Now, over the weekend, Tom Callis broke the 198 uh, all-time squat record in wraps, which means by all federations and all years, uh, squatted 815 pounds at a, a body weight of 198 pounds. Before we get into the video, be sure to smash the thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. I don't really want to talk about whether you guys think he hit depth or not. One, we only have a video from the front. Judges often from the front are just worried about the commands and they're also just worried about um, bar path going up and down um, on, on the squat. The depth is from the side. We don't have a video from the side, so all I can do is trust the judges there and that's all Tom can do as well. So I guess in this case, uh, we're just gonna ignore any negative comments you guys have. Um, that's part of powerlifting in every federation. Uh, there is human error in all sports. Every NBA uh, referee, uh, referee in the NFL make bad calls or they make wrong calls or they make right calls. The difference is there's a lot more calls being made in the NBA so they can skip over one. In powerlifting, you know, there's only nine per lift. Lifter every session, beside the point. Um, Tom was once a world record holder, I believe, in the squat at uh, 165 pounds back in the day. And I've been buddies with him for a couple years now, maybe four or five years. And I kept seeing, um, one, his potential, and two, that he kept bombing out of meets. Tom, talking to you, pal. Uh, he was bombing out of meets for about a year or two straight there where he was uh, trying to take the 181 and also the 198 record. And uh, I analyzed his training. I talked to him for a while. Uh, and then I convinced him just to try something a little different. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit um, about what we changed in his training for him uh, to go from about a 700 pound squat to a 815 pound squat uh, in the course of about two or three years. Um, one of the things I guess to start with is uh, he did go up in weight class um, from 181 to 198, but the main difference was he just wasn't cutting. He was kind of always weighing 198 and then would cut to 181, I believe. Don't quote me on all this. Tom can comment below or you guys can go ask him specifics, but that's one of the problems. Uh, and so then we, we told him to chill out, stay in the weight class, and so he weighed about 200 pounds uh, and trained there. Staying in your weight class, whether you're advanced, going for a world record or not, not cutting weight is always gonna allow you to perform better. Uh, you may be able to break this record or Wilkes might be slightly better, but you'll always perform better when you don't have to worry about uh, cutting weight and, and that stimulus and stress on your body leading into a meet. That's just fact. So if you want to get up a weight class or down a weight class, I suggest doing it in your off season and then having a good eight or 12, 16 weeks preparation period or peak um, being at the body weight you want to compete at. Uh, two hour weigh-ins is even more difficult and so that stands even more true. Uh, he competes in federations with 24 hour weigh-ins so it's a little bit easier but I still suggest it for everybody. Uh, with Tom's training, before I, I worked with him, uh, his training was almost too specific, where we talked about this in the past. Singles are great if your technique is efficient. Heavy singles in training allows you to really dial in the specificity of powerlifting, get used to heavier weights. But if you're only doing singles, you're um, kind of uh, negating one of the main factors that help in hypertrophy and um, strength over time, which is volume, sets times reps times weight. And so there's a lack of volume in Tom's training, um, as well as just building phases. He didn't really have a periodized plan. And so what we first is just kind of broke him down in the off season. We started to get him a little bit more hypertrophy and a little bit more training in general. His form in the squat is really good. His form in the deadlift is pretty dang good as well. Uh, and so we just plugged him some, full of some volume uh, to clean up his technique in the deadlift. Uh, we basically did a kind of a pause cycle. Most of the cycles I implement uh, to, are either to fix a weakness help technique or uh, grow uh, uh, hypertrophy or, or, or strength in the off season. So uh, we would do four to eight week cycles of different type of um, exercise variation to build them back up. So we did some pause uh, squats. Uh, we also did higher rep squats, which is something he's never really dove into too much. So we uh, you know, hit multiple sets of eight and 12. Um, very loosely, it was based on the Infinite Offseason by Kaizen, uh, which is a free program. Again, if you guys always want to check it out and grab it, and you can kind of manipulate that to yourself. That's a basic template I have in my head that works for many, not all. Uh, and then I add frequency, or I take away volume, or I add volume depending on the athlete. And in Tom's case, uh, because he's so strong, the frequency can't maybe be as high as some other people. Squatting twice a week is plenty. Pulling uh, one kind of real pull from the ground, and then maybe a supplemental pull or a stiff leg. That's something we went with. And then going into a meet, um, the only real difference uh, from, you know, again, kind of Kaizen pa uh, powerlifting program, which we have, uh, which is a 12 week peak and Tom's is that because he's a more advanced lifter and because he's handling such heavy loads, 
the heavy, the, even though you're getting stronger, the heavier loads still drain you more than if you were uh, weaker. You know, a 600 pound squat, it, the actual tonnage you're moving is just uh, less uh, detrimental or less you need to recover from than 800, 900 pound squat. So um, we had him handle some heavier singles uh, four to eight weeks out. Uh, is one difference from the Kaizen powerlifting program. Uh, and then another one is I had to take away a little bit of volume. Again, um, you know, we, we break into real specific as we're getting peaked and we handle a lot of doubles, a lot of triples, a lot of singles to really hone in that technique. And we raise the sets up to still get that volume, to still get that um, kind of overreaching phase. Uh, but in Tom's case, he probably couldn't handle eight, 10, 12 sets of, of three at whatever, 700 pounds, it just becomes too heavy and too detrimental for him to recover from. So we took those sets away a little bit. Um, but if you're a lighter lifter, you know, even myself, or excuse me, a little bit uh, less advanced or not as strong, you know, I'm handling 400, 500 pound squats. Uh, I might be able to handle 12 sets of three or something and still recover just fine. Um, he has someone help him with his nutrition, so that was one thing I obviously made him lock in on. Uh, eating in a slight calorie surplus for anybody trying to uh, really push their strength is going to be of large benefit for your recovery. But so again, uh, I think I've helped Tom now with about three different meets, uh, handling you know about six or eight months apart. So then in between, again, we have those good uh, phases of, of a little bit of recovery. You know, So sometimes we're handling uh, right after a meet, we'll have four to eight weeks where he's just getting back into flow. Maybe he's doing some front squats, some pause squats, some beltless work. And the beltless work isn't necessarily to build up his belt work, which I think a lot of people um, believe in. I don't personally believe in that. The beltless work is just to have him handle less of a load, to give his spine a little bit of a break, knees, legs, mind a little bit of a break to not worry about his overall numbers same thing as when he competes in wraps we do a couple cycles of um, just sleeved work just to keep building up the raw strength um, and it's mostly just so he doesn't have to squat six seven hundred every single week year round he can now handle four or five hundred for pauses or beltless and still make uh, cause enough stimulus to adapt and grow and continue to make progress um, having six or eight months break in between a meet uh, is a little bit more necessary when you're more advanced or stronger, more experienced. Um, so again, we'd have four to eight weeks, a little bit chill, um, some beltless work, some different variations, some paused work. Um, and then we would go into another uh, four to eight weeks, maybe a little bit heavier or more competition style, slightly more specific. And then we get into the 12 week peak again. And, and the peak is really just kind of a, a four week phase of, of kind of base volume, getting you really specific and adapted. It's another four to uh, maybe four to eight weeks or four to six weeks, really pushing the volume hard, um, kind of that overreaching phase. And then it's another, you know, at the end kind of overlapping, but four weeks of kind of a taper in the actual peak itself where you're um, handling heavier loads, 85, 87, 90, 92, 95%, um, and, then, uh, and then a hard crash on the taper. I think, again, for Tom, uh, because he's a little bit stronger, his heaviest deadlift was about 10 days out from the meet. Uh, his heaviest squat was about eight or nine days out from the meet, whereas, again, uh, maybe a lighter lifter, a less experienced lifter, or someone handling not a world record type numbers, uh, we can keep that frequency up and the volume up, keep that taper till the very end, and you might be able to squat um, five, four, perhaps even three days out from the meet, a little bit heavier to really keep that volume and adaptation and peak to the last uh, taper until the last couple days. So this, uh Tom uh, said we did it when he texted me, uh, and I never ever would take credit to that. I've talked about this in the past, uh, you know, coaching some some really good athletes and some strong people that, um, you know, maybe I open a door, maybe I lead someone uh, to the way, but it's all their work and they did it. I did nothing to do with any of this. Uh, you know, my boy Dan, Storm Cloud, Fat Dan, squatted 800 pounds was a big goal of his. Dan was going to squat 800 pounds at some point in his career me programming and maybe helping him maybe got him to do it a little bit sooner than he would if he was just free balling it and i believe the same with tom tom's super strong he's insanely dedicated to his craft uh, he wants to be the best he wants to train hard he wants to train heavy uh, and i just gave him a little bit of a road path there um, by no means is what do i do super secret or super proprietary or anything once you understand some of the basic concepts of programming and you've worked around enough athletes and i've been really lucky enough to talk to guys like ed Cohn, chad wesley smith uh, joel jameson and a bunch of really good minds in the strength and conditioning world over the years um, that I've got to learn a good amount and I've also had uh, uh, the opportunities to apply it to many different types of athletes from ladies of uh, lighter and heavier body weights guys young old middle-aged world uh, world-class lifters brand new lifters I've just coached a lot of people over the last 10 years um, so I'm just pretty lucky to, that that someone like Tom trusts me uh, to write out their program it was, it was pretty exciting to be honest uh, I've talked about a lot why I don't compete in powerlifting it doesn't really get me excited but once I saw uh, shout out to our guy Huck Finn uh, once I saw Huck Finn's story and how excited Tom was to hit that squat um, 
um, it got me really excited. Just it, it, I like seeing other people happy, uh, and I'm not a saint or all, all, altruistic. It's just it, it makes me happy to see other people happy, and I think that's a little bit of human nature. So uh, to, to play 1% part uh, uh, of the success of, of Tom's squatting is really, really cool. So shout out to him. Give him a follow on Instagram. Um, if you guys want to get programming that's similar to his, check out kaizentraining.com. The powerlifting 12-week is very similar. Uh, obviously, I customized it and tapered it a little bit just to him, but generally speaking, that's what I would write myself up if I was going to compete in 12 weeks from now. I appreciate you guys and the support. Give this video a thumbs up if you want to hear more about some of the people I coach and how I coach them over the time, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.